all for joining us today for the tech coffee break. And thank you for whoever just started recording this. Um, when I put out the invitation this month, I mentioned that we were going to start off by talking about infographics as are suggested in our new impact statement reports. And I invited Dave Hauser and Sonia, I believe that was Sonia that I asked if you guys would be on here because you, no, it was not Sonia. Sorry, Sonia's probably in a panic. No, it was Dave and I'm watching faces pop up on here. I'm going to be inspired. <laughs> Kelly, our Brewster, that's the one. She's not on here yet that I see, but will likely be joining us because she did let me know that she would be on here. So I'm going to open it up for anyone to ask a specific question. Oh, Becky says Kelly's on here. I don't know why I'm not seeing her. I don't show that she's on here, but one or the other of you, but I think it might be a good place to start with if there are specific questions um, about where to go or what to think about when planning for infographics. Don't everyone talk at once. Um, Bob, I could talk about the impact statement. Um, if Since everybody's at a computer, I guess before we started this call, I actually opened, I went to the For Employees page on the Extension Service For Employees page, Impact Reporting and Reports, and go to the Impact Statement Guide. I went to that link and I was going to actually just copy in to the message area the link that would take everyone to AgCom and the section for what they have about infographics. I was going to leave that up to somebody else to do, but um, the first thing I would say about the impact statement is for anybody who's confused by that term, we have recently decided that we're changing the verbiage of how we typically we call them impact reports and we'll now be calling them impact statements. So I'm going to try to use that word wherever I can. So, um, the impact statement looks a little different this year than in the past, simply because we were asking for a couple new pieces, and part of that is to add infographics and graphics, like a photo. And the reason for that is kind of twofold, more so to make the impact statement appealing for the reader that the entire statement isn't filled with data all throughout because we all know that's somewhat boring. And so using an infographic is a way to share data in more of a visual, in a, a condensed area. So. Kelly, I'm going to ask if you would step in at this point. I know you do a really nice job of explaining why to do that. Sure. Thanks for having me, Dina. Um, so uh, Becky just shared that uh, uh, Dave Hauser and I did a um, webinar on infographics. I think, uh, I don't know when that exactly was, over the summer? Or... And I don't hear <laughs> Kelly speaking, so... Oh. Um, in the chat box, I did notice that Becky put in there a link to yeah, the webinar I think the rest that was of us put together hearing, by Kelly and Dave. I think the rest of us are hearing Kelly, Dina. She's talking. Dina can't hear me either. So, <laughs> Dina, can you hear me? Hello? Hey, Dina. We can hear Kelly and Bob talking. Go ahead, Kelly. Well, I'm going to, yeah. I think Dina is the only one who can't hear us, so. Okay, then I'm going to continue. Um, so, where was I? Um, so, anyway, uh, Dave Hauser and I did a um, infographic 
webinar. Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember when. I don't remember what I had for lunch yesterday. So um, anyway, but so we did a, um, and it was, Becky provided the link to that. And um, I do think it has some neat things. Dave shared some um, neat information about um, what are some of the elements of a good infographic. And so you can go and review some of that. But um, I don't know if Dina covered this. I got on a couple minutes late, but, um, you know, we think, well, you know, some of us aren't sure what exactly is an infographic. So um, an infographic is a way to present complicated information or ideas in a way that is um, visually interesting or easy to understand. So um, that could be a timeline of information. That could be a graph. That could be a size comparison. You could put circles on a page and say, my, you know, I started doing this program and we had five people attend and show a small circle. And then um, as the program has changed over time, we have this many coming to the program and, it, and you have a bigger circle. And so it's a way for people to go, instead of writing that in a narrative form, um, the way our impact reports used to kind of do, um, using infographics might be a way to share that information visually so that someone can see it really quick and can see the impact right away um, and say, wow, that program has really grown or wow, that program had a really big impact in that community because I can see it really quickly and I might not even have to read your full impact statement. I might be able to just look at the infographic and be able to tell that. So um, that's what a, an infographic is, is and what an infographic should do. Um, and so, like I said, in that presentation that Dave and I put together, um, we hope we kind of take you through some common types of infographics, um, what a good infographic should have. And I believe we also, um, in that webinar, take you through some um, websites like Canva, um, and picked a chart, and I think there's one other, I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but so, some free websites to go to that um, you can uh, build, that have some templates and some things that you can build an infographic with, and um, what else? And we even, I think, uh, go through a quick demonstration on um, kind of building, how to use those free websites as well. So. That's a very quick overview. Does anyone have any questions for me at this time? Website, Becky says the website says Mark, so it was a little while ago. Uh, my only input at this point is the fact that when you were doing infographics, we're really trying to simplify the information. So when you do find a piece of material or something like that that you will turn into an infographic, try to simplify it as best you can so that you really get your point across. I'm going to um, share my screen really quick just uh, to show you kind of what our um, the PowerPoint that we put together. Present my desktop here. to kind of expand on what Dave was saying about how, um, I don't know if you all can see that yet. Yes, no? Not Somebody, yet. Not yet. Not yet, <laughs> Already. Well, try one more time. Okay, while well, we're waiting for Kelly's yeah. screen okay. to come, um, I don't know, Mike, if you were able to see the message that Becky typed in the message box. I think she meant for you to talk. <laughs> Okay, I can though. I turned my mute off. Okay. 
Yes, I personally like to see it because I think we become a society that's more visual. And those photos, that infographics, is a quick way for people to see the information. Uh, this might have occurred many years ago, but I had a co-worker that said, why don't we add photos to our narratives? So we did, and at that point in time, I was working really close with some folks on Salt Cedar in Emmons County. We sent it out the next day. A comm county commissioner called that had never called the office before, and I'm going, oh, great, what did we do wrong? And he said, well, I got that deal from you in the mail today, and I see a picture of that weed that there, Salt Cedar. I've got one in my yard. So it does pay to include that kind of visual information. I echo, echo that, excuse me. I, I was just going to ask if anybody out there has had any experience with doing infographics for any other projects. There's some right now on the main extension website, and I think it's, it's it's really helpful to get a quick snapshot of data that you can easily memorize and retain to give out to others. I really like Kala's comment in the chat box. <laughs> Pictures of people actually doing things, very true. Um, a lot of times a person's face is familiar, they'll see a photo. Um, kind of lets them know that we actually have people attending some of the things we do. Where else would we use them? We, we do it like in a narrative. Anybody else have that experience? Dana, this is Mike, and I would say the majority of narratives I receive from counties right now do include photos. So photos, but have you seen any with infographics yet? Yeah, I think I have once or twice. Okay, good. You, know, you asked earlier about who uses them, and I think right now anybody that's working really closely with uh, Lynette Flage and some of the work that the community vitality is doing, they tend to use infographics. And I wondered if somebody would own up to that, and I see Stacy Wang put a comment in the chat box about the Eat Smart. I have noticed that the food nutrition department, they actually use infographics quite a lot, and um, I find it really useful because I don't want to always read through paragraphs of information just to get a couple pieces of data. Today I received the, the first of many impact statements from the Northwest, and the very first one had infographics. Good. So, Kelly, you mentioned uh, you threw out the name of Canva and picked a chart. Um, I'd like to ask a little more detailed information on some of the programs that are used to make infographics. Um, I think there are some for purchase kind of programs that you can buy. Would there be any benefit to doing that versus the free ones? Um. That's a really good question, Dina. Um, and I don't know that I have worked enough um, with, I haven't worked with any, well, um, I know our graphic designers here in AdCom are probably are using programs like Adobe Illustrator, Adobe InDesign, or I think Dave even uses... Uh, Corel Draw. Is Corel what, Draw, yeah. I've been using a lot of. Um, which those are very, uh, I think... Um, you know, if you maybe spend months and or years uh, tinkering, <laughs> you might figure them out. But, um, you know, or, you know, depending on what your uh, level of education and, and willingness to really dig in is. But um, I think what the, uh, the advantage of using some of those programs like a Canva pick to chart, and I, there's one other that I just can't remember and I think it's my favorite one and now I can't uh uh can't find it anywhere but um you know they 
they provide some templates and they, I believe, help people um, put things to, you know, they, they, they have some symbols and some things that, you know, drag and drop type um, templates that make it incredibly easy for you to insert your information. But because they're kind of plug and play type templates, they help you, I think they help the, the average Joe um, maybe look a little more professional than if you were literally starting with a blank slate, a blank uh, computer screen and having to, you know, kind of become an, uh, a graphic designer instantly. Um, these programs help you, uh, you know, be able to look a little more polished because they already have those symbols preloaded and and uh, nice fonts and color schemes and things of that nature, um, you know, are already in there. So I'm not sure about some of the, I'm not sure of the ones that you're referencing, Dina, that might be cost money. And I know that ones like Canva and some of that, you know, they're free up to a certain point. Some of their more advanced templates and symbols do cost money, but they're they're not terribly expensive. It might be a dollar for a certain background or template or symbol, but they're not super expensive. And I guess it all just kind of depends on uh, what you're looking for. Does anyone else out there have any um, uh, free or not free web-based uh, programs that they've used that I, we're not aware of? Lisa Peterson says before she knew of these cool programs, she used PowerPoint. And I think that's what um, a lot of people do. It provides you know, a nice looking background and some opportunities to, you know, move things around. And um, she says, Lisa also says she built graphics with their charts, et cetera. Hey, I think that's great. Use whatever works for you and what you feel comfortable in and that allows you to do the things that you need to do. Kelly, I got a quick question. Sure. Um, when we were at Fall Conference and we started discussing discussing branding and that type, one of the big things they talked about was like that consistent viewer, that consistent look. Would you suggest, you know, since there is so many different backgrounds and things like that, should we try to stick to a basis of like our green and gold? Or does um, that really not apply there? No, I think that would we love for you to, yes. And um, I know in Dave's, uh, if you attended one of Dave's breakouts at Fall Conference, and I believe it's also in this webinar, we do share what the um, proper green and gold colors are um, for you to be using. And, and we'd love for you to um, be using some of those uh, color schemes. But I think we also want you to feel like you can... Um, be creative and original as long as you use the proper logos <laughs> and those logos aren't stretched out or so small that you can't see them or, you know, as long as you have the pro proper logos and um, accommodation um, type statements on anything you do, you know, my take, Becky might feel differently, but my take is, you know, we invite you to be creative and original and as long as you're um, infographic uh, gives people a way to visualize what you, you know, your information um, in a in a neat way. Please, you know, be original and creative as long as you use the proper logos. And I, I would love it if they um, had some green and gold. I think that helps build some, um, you know, you know, consistency and um, helps people kind of identify with what we're doing. Becky says, don't worry about non-discrimination accommodation statements on infographics. Okay, good good call, Becky. Um, impossible. But I think a logo in a corner would be nice, <laughs> um, just so that if your infographic gets shared um, through social media outlets or wherever that, um, you know, it's got, our, it's got our branding on it. I hope that answers your question, Sam. Yeah, thanks, Kelly. Mm-hmm. Kelly, you were going to show us something. Were you going to? I don't know what's again? going. Well, I don't know what's going on. Every time I've, I keep hitting present, and it's not 
Um, it doesn't seem to want to present my screen. Let's try it one more time. Present desktop, primary monitor. Let's see what happens. So while Kelly's no. trying that, Dave Hauser, I appreciate you guys both being on this call, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to also fill in any blanks you think we have here. Well, so far I haven't heard any blanks. Um, when it came to the uh, the whole branding idea, I said in my uh, in some of my trainings I did a conference that it's true that you don't necessarily have to stick to uh, the green and gold, but when you're trying to when you're trying to represent your information from a professional and established organization, sometimes having your message out there and people see that green and gold, it lets them know, oh, that's the that's NDSU, and that's you know, so it gives you that extra uh, buying power, I guess, uh, where someone might actually take a closer look at it because they see it as, ooh, that's probably information I want to take a look at, especially if it's like the salt cedar, you know, if you got some information out there about some weed or something out there and you happen to see the green and gold versus something else out there, you're going to go, hey, I want to get that information from NDSU. So I guess that was my one, my two cents worth as far as the color schemes. But I understand if you're working with uh, kids in 4-H and stuff like that, you want to draw their attention. Sometimes our old standby green and gold isn't probably going to grab their eyes every time. And I'm more than willing to, uh, I offered up at my presentations too, if, you, if you've done up a, a, a infographic, you want to send it, you know, send it my way to take a little quick peek at before you publish. That's that's fine too. I could take quick peeks too. Ah, the this is Kelly. Has my screen come up at all? No. I have not seen it yet, Kelly. Ah, okay. Well, it has those. It has those. Uh, color numbers on there. <laughs> you can take a look at it. But if you want to go ahead, Dave. Yeah, I'll, and, I'll look them up and type them in. I, it'll give me a minute here. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I think that's a really good idea, whether it be Dave or anybody else, when you create an infographic, if maybe you ask someone else to just have a look at it and see if it's appealing. I mean, but ask somebody that likes you so they give you good feedback, right? Oh, that's a lot. Okay. So in the chat box, we see the colors. So does anybody else have any questions about infographics specifically? Okay, well, since we're all quiet, I'm going to move on to talking about graphics, like images. And I'm going to ask that nasty question because they never get tired of hearing it. Where are we at with um, having one good place to share photos? And I don't know if that should go to Becky or Kelly or who's the overseer. That's a Becky question. I can take that one. And right. Elizabeth is taking the lead on that project, and she is still on maternity leave, so it's been on hold for the last two months. However, keep sending us photos. What we always need is you guys in action, not just you taking pictures, but give somebody else your phone or camera or whatever, and we need staff in action photos more than anything. We can get the pretty cattle in the pasture and the pretty flax field and stuff like that. 
where we're always short with annual highlights and brochures and things like that is staff in action photos. And I hope I'm not stepping too far, but I think Kelly's going to be working on updating some branding and marketing materials, and we're really going to need staff in action photos for that. So go ahead and email them to me if you want to for now. When Elizabeth comes back after the first of the year, she'll be uploading the appropriate ones that we can use and keep them coming. Okay, I have to make a comment on that, Becky. I take tons of pictures and I take high resolution photos and I don't want to waste the time to try to figure out which pictures you guys want. Isn't it there a way we can share to an online drive where you can look at them and say, oh, that's a good one or that's a good one, and then take it? That's what we tried to do with Flickr, and we got the pretty snow scenes and fields, but not the staff in action. So we've kind of already tried that, encouraged you to upload your photos to Flickr. Um, if you have a recommendation for something else, we could explore that. I see what you mean. Becky, aren't, let, Becky, let us talk aren't about we, that some more. Uh, Becky, aren't we building a, uh, a kind of a system that we're going to be able to use to be able to find those photos down the road from now? Yes, but Elizabeth has to upload them to that system. Yes, correct. But so what we're Dina saying is, you upload all 500 of her photos to that system. It, it may yeah. not be 500, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. For instance, I have a for instance. Okay? okay, we recently had Civic U, and at this 4-H event, I I mean I was able to get some really nice pictures of Amelia and Sam. I mean, I have some good pictures, but what I think are good, maybe they don't think are good or you don't think are good, but if I put them all out there in a folder where anybody who wants them can just take them, that just makes sense to me because if Sam needs a picture for something she's doing, she can go get her picture. If Amelia needs hers, she'll go get her picture. You know what I'm saying? To create your own site like that, then you're certainly welcome to, but we're trying to have a little bit of quality control, I guess. So, because Sarah, this is, this is going to be available to the public, too. So, if you want to share your own photos, you are very welcome to do that. Okay, so Sarah put a comment in here that says Google Drive, and I'm just going to say, because those that were involved with that Civic U event know. I did upload 90% of my photos, and there's quite a few of them, and I put them in a folder, and I shared it with every extension person that helped plan that event, but I still probably missed some people who had kids there or a team or whatever. And I like the idea of a Google Drive or something that's through NDSU that not everyone would get to. I don't know that I picked the right one. That's why I'm asking for a little guidance. Google Photos. I, Stacy, I have to admit I don't know that one. But see, what you're doing is different than AgCom's purpose. Our goal is a little bit different because we need identification and things like that. So you just putting it up there and sharing with a few people, that's great. But for us to use it publicly, we often need the identification and where it was taken and things like that. So so they're both great ideas, just two different purposes, two different goals. Yeah, I'm trying to make it so that it, the people that are involved can go get the photos and use them themselves, the people in uh -huh. the pictures. And that's great. It is complicated, I guess. Um, I thought Brad Cogdo was typing a message. I thought it showed that, and I don't see anything. But I was trying to think, like, there's often times that the 4-H office will say, we need a picture of X, Y, or Z, and then they put out a request. <laughs> he was typing a message, and he quit. Hmm. We answered the question, I suppose. And they automatically, uh, um, Stacy, can you just talk what you're trying to explain? Because that would help me a lot. 
Uh, Google Photos is there is Google's platform to um, store photos. So, in, like Drive is for files. You can put photos in there, but um, Google Photos is what they would like you to use for photos. And it's unlimited storage for free. So, like I, the other, last week we were uh, cooking recipe testing in the kitchen here on campus, and I took a bunch of photos on my iPad of our students cooking and the recipes they were testing and they shared it on our Facebook page, but they also automatically update to our, my Google Photos account. So. So can you share that account with, like, can you invite people to that? Mm-hmm. Yep. So you would, it would be a good means to share. Yeah, so we could start one, like if we wanted to do an FCS one, we could do that, but. And we could do a 4-8, I mean, we could have, ca like, folders or categories that we could kind of sort pictures into. I like the idea of this. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, the capabilities, I believe, are all there. Ooh. I share photos with my parents that way. Okay, and so now Brad put his comment in here about it is frustrating. We seem to need good photos, but can't spend time looking through thousands of photos. And so is it acceptable then to just always put out a plea for, I need a photo, and have somebody just dump it into you, I guess? I don't know, maybe both work, but I, I wanted to kind of pick on Sam. I see she's on here, and because I know I have that photo from Civic U, would you think to ask if you wanted a photo, would you think, oh, this colleague of mine actually had their camera at this event? Maybe we need a little subgroup because what too, ha too often happens in our organization is somebody starts something and somebody else starts something else and then you can't remember the password to this one and that one and this one and that one and maybe we need, since there's some interest in this group or maybe the innovation team should just think about this, maybe we already have a group, and think about is there a way we can internally share photos and AgCom may already have the categories broken up. We're trying to keep consistent lists for how we sort news releases and publication. Well, I think those are a little different, but photos and things like that. So we may already have that categorization list. But again, AgCom's goal is to create a public photo gallery, kind of like the one University Relations has that I put in the Dropbox, or in the chat box, rather but maybe we need to create an internal one too. But for consistency instead of not knowing who put what where. So maybe that's something for the innovation team unless somebody else wants to work on it. And could it be like when you click in that one, and I can't remember if it's which SharePoint or whatever where it says folder shared with me, and if you had folders that had photos in them and broken down by category and you shared them with like all extension then people could go in and access them but it would only show up when they clicked on folders shared with me does that make any sense the, the, say that again Dina Okay, I thought that was going to be confusing because I can't remember the terms for everything. <laughs> okay, with your Microsoft 365, you yeah. click on the little dots in the left corner, we have SharePoint, right? Yes. And what's the other one where we share OneDrive. 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 Is that what it's called? But you would, I, I see what you're saying now, you would have to put every single, if the goal is to have an all staff site, you would have to put every single person's name in there. Kim's asking even about the Ag Info Center. 
So that or the Google Photos or something. But you wouldn't have to put everyone's name in there. If you sent out an email, because you can send it to a listserv. Oh, the link. And you Got would it. invite everyone to this folder. And when they would click on it, it would just merely say, folder shared with me. Yeah. But then do people have uh, the right to add to that folder? That's kind of what I was wondering. If they could no. would we take only or could they put in, too? No. It would only be that owner, I think. Maybe we should experiment with that. I think we need a little group to work on this. Becky, this is Mike. Um, as I look at the university relations link that you put there, two things come to mind, for me at least, is one, I can see the purpose of extension having its own that we can then use for our own internal documents, etc. Maybe we'd have more photos that would be put up there. But as I look at this university relations, and I see that research is there, and I wonder, well, why doesn't Extension have its own album within that gallery or gallery within that album? So shouldn't we be working with university relations to add an Extension category to their page? I would be glad to try that. I'm not sure they would let us submit other photos. I think every single one of those has been taken by Dan Keck, so they know the history of it, so they feel comfortable with it. But I'd be glad to ask that. I'm still fighting to get extension on the home page, remember? <laughs> I will gladly ask that, though. Thanks for bringing that up, Matt. Bleah, Mike. Matt, checking out. Somehow I knew bringing this up was going to make for conversation, but it's. I, I think now more than ever, extension people have photos, and phones take some pretty good quality photos, and so we need to be sharing them with each other. I mean, I think we just have to come up, we have to come up with a way that works to share them. But so the let's ball have is a rolling. group think through this so we have a consistent way to share it instead of a bunch of little groups. And I, I just want to really encourage that. Okay, so anybody who is really interested in working on this can either email me and we'll make sure that it gets back to, uh, that names get put forward to the innovations team because I do agree that might be a group to go back to. Any other suggestions? Any other thoughts on this topic? Because I, I do believe, I know what Becky is saying about needing to identify who's in the photo, etc. That's why I think letting people go and get the pictures from random pictures, they're going to know who they're, like if you're looking for a group of kids that you had at an event, you would know who they are. Then you could identify them. So, I, I mean, I get that's important. I think it would work itself out in some cases. You know, to help with what Brad was talking about earlier about, you know, having to search through thousands, if this would be done properly, there could be tags that could be tagged to these photos and people could search by those tags. Which is what we started doing in Flickr, but obviously so, Becky says that didn't work either, so. But the concept. And that's why we have... Concept. That's why we have a consistent list of tags that we're using in the photos Elizabeth is uploading, because some person might type, you know, cow, and another person might type dairy, and, and so it's possible to have it really organic like that, but we found it didn't work very well in Flickr. Huh. And that means you have to tag every single photo. So Dina's idea of uploading 100 photos from an event, it would have to be a totally separate folder that, you know, here are my photos from Citizenship in Action or whatever the case, because that's the one where I shot 400 photos. And, and that's great. 
but then somebody, if they're looking for their county, either somebody has to go through and identify each county or something. I mean, somebody's got to put some work into this. <laughs> it's not just, oh, I'll upload my photos and you go find it, because then that doesn't help Brad's problem. So. Well, really, the person uploading should be the person that takes it. Yes. By event. I don't know that it's realistic to think of the person taking the photos to tag people by their name all the time, because Becky just mentioned citizenship in action, and I bet you took pictures of a lot of kids that you didn't know. But at least if they were all tagged with the citizenship in action. Right. And, it, and again, again, it goes back something. to the person uploading, though. Put I the burden tagged. On. I, I named every photo of the formal, here's who came from our county. That took time, but I went and did those, for example. Okay, I'd like to look at what Brad just shared with us. <laughs> Oh, that's really nice, Brad. What Brad just shared is what we're trying to work toward, a public site like that. That's not going to have 200 photos from Citizenship in Action. So we're talking apples and oranges, but I love what Brad put there because that's exactly what AgCom is working toward. But that's not what Dina asked for. <laughs> well, and I'm thinking that like what I did for the event now, I, again, I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick on Brad now because uh, just a yes or no. But so I shared the photos from. I shared the photos from Civic U, and I shared it with a certain group of people that I can't remember now. Did it get shared with you, Brad? So my, I don't know that it was shared with anybody in the 4-H office. And maybe what I'm getting at is that as somebody who's willing to share pictures, Brad, that's a problem. Yeah, so it's we're sharing it, you know, with people who are ex-colleagues that are at these events, but maybe we're forgetting that the 4-H office then isn't then having access to them. And I'll have to go back and add you to that folder. But I still think that can be done through that Microsoft platform by sharing a folder. And I don't know, I'm going to just say that, yes, we will make sure that the innovations team talks about this on our next call. Anybody else have any burning information on this topic? Huh, so Minnesota's photos are professional. Well, that's just it. Let's just hire a photographer for NDSU and... We know that's not going to happen. Okay, anything else anyone would like to talk about while we're on here today? Brad likes Stacy's suggestion it could serve both needs. Google Photos. I put uh, that maybe there could be some sort of private site set up where we all have access to upload and then somebody would then go through and choose photos that would then populate the public site. That sounds great. <laughs> yes. I, I uh, vote for Bob. Yeah, Bob is volunteering to be the lucky dog. <laughs> He's going to go through thousands of photos. <laughs> but wouldn't it be awesome to have hundreds of photos to choose from when you need one? We have some amazing photographers in Extension, in case you didn't realize that. There are a lot of people who take some really nice pictures. Uh, the only thing I can add at this point about photos is that 
I work with a lot of the photos that everybody takes. And yes, there are some great photographers out there. The second thing is, is if we populate a internal library of photos with a bunch of IMG00389 photos, we won't have all that data that tells us who who took it, who, uh, as long as, you know, I know some cameras, some I, iPhones and all this stuff, you can have that built in. And then it's in there. If you actually look at the image file, you can find some of that information. But when you're looking at just the title of the photo, it's going to help people look at what's in there, you know, in that, in that thousands and thousands of photos. If someone does the work originally before it goes into that pile of photos and changes that IMG00382 to something at least salt cedar uh, photo, you know, 01, you know, that's just my 10 cents worth on that one. <laughs> that makes sense. And I know, Dina, you said, you know, you don't have the time to go through the photos before you upload them. But to be honest, even my personal photos, I zip through, oh, that one's out of focus, delete. Oh, that one's somebody's backside, not their face, delete. I do that with my personal photos even. Right. I don't I mean, want them taking up space if I'm I, never going to use them. Right. I did do that. But what I'm getting at is I, I posted or wanted to share photos of kids I don't even know. Does that make, I mean, if I had pictures of somebody, I'm not going to use them. Okay. You know, that, that's what I mean. There were kids that weren't in my county, but they were still from somebody's county, and they might want that picture, but I wouldn't want it. I mean, I'm, that, that sounds bad. I don't want it, but. Well, rather than taking it. everybody's time, let's get a small group to think through this, because this is a great challenge. Did you, Becky, would you like us to have volunteers from this group or would you like the innovations team to discuss it? I thought you already said if anybody's interested right, if in they're working interested. on it, email you. Okay, email me. I was just thinking, do you, did you want it nailed down before we leave this call? Okay, so just email me if you're interested and I will pass the information on to the team. Okay, so anything else we need to discuss about these topics infographics or photos okay hearing none should i say that three times hearing none <laughs> anything else anybody would like to bring up on this call today any other issues that you're having we say tech coffee break. It doesn't, we'd like it to be tech related, but if you have any other questions, I can't be on here and not think to remind people to please visit Ag Communications website and find the instructions for adding your photo. For those who haven't done that yet, it really does help everyone get to know everyone else. And we're using Skype more and more all the time. And before I was having audio issues, I had the link copied and I was going to just paste it into the chat box, but I switched computer, so you'll have to find it. Anybody have anything else? Okay, if there's nothing else, I would like to say again, thank you to everybody for taking the time to join us. And next month, in looking at the calendar, the first Monday is January 2nd, so without meeting with the innovations team, I can pretty much tell you that we probably won't be doing this on the first Monday, but we will we will send out a reminder or an invitation to join us next month. So thanks, and have a great December. <laughs>